And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Kent Myers. And uh, once again, Mick Cornett is uh, unavailable this week out on city business, but I promise you he will be back next week. Uh, today we're really thrilled to have uh, an opportunity to do a show about a fine educational institution in Oklahoma that uh, we want to feature today, Langston University up in the Langston, Oklahoma, just north of Oklahoma City. We want to find out what's going on up there, uh, what uh, kind of uh, activities the students are involved in, what kind of educational programs are being presented, uh, as we understand it, very successfully. And we're going to hear it uh, through the eyes and the ears and the mouth of the interim president of Langston University, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Henry Ponder. Uh, Dr. Ponder has a spectacular educational background to lead an, inst an institution of higher learning. We're going to find out about that, find out about, as we've titled it, What's News at Langston University with Dr. Henry Ponder. So stick around. We're going to take a break right now, but we'll be right back to talk about Langston. Thanks. You're watching The Verdict. America has been here before, faced with daunting challenges, and we've always found the courage to lead. Foreign oil, greenhouse gases, we have the power to do something about them with American natural gas. Chesapeake is forging ahead, converting our fleets to clean burning natural gas vehicles, encouraging others to do the same. Welcome to America. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. And welcome back to The Verdict, Kent Myers. Uh, and we're really pleased today to have uh, joining us as our guest, the interim president of Langston University, Dr. Henry Ponder. Uh, Dr. Ponder did his undergraduate work quite uh, interestingly, I think, at Langston University a number of years ago. He then went and acquired a master's degree from Oklahoma State University, and then acquired his PhD from the other OSU called Ohio State uh, University. He uh, has been an educator vir virtually all of his life, and uh, he has uh, been president of Talladega College, he, and we'll talk about that. He's been president of Benedict College. He's been president of Fisk University, and just uh, this year has been named interim president uh, back at, uh, at his uh, uh, original uh, educational spot, Langston University, and is... Uh, on board, going full blast, uh, getting things done at Langston and keeping the educational process uh, churning. He has in his past been the general president of Alpha Phi Alpha, which is the first Greek letter fraternity available for African Americans. In September of 2011, he took over as interim president of Langston University. He's been kind enough to drive down here to tape this show with us. Uh, Dr. Ponder, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ken. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a pleasure for us to have you, I promise you. Um, this is the fourth institution of higher learning, I believe, uh, of which you've been the president. Uh, talk to us first, if you will, about your experiences at Talladega College. When was that, and what did you find, and what did you do? Well, I, that was the last of my college experiences until this one. Mm. Uh, I did uh, two years there from 
01 to 03. I had it backwards, and, I apologize. And uh, when I went there, they had been having difficulty with their accreditation by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. And that's very important that you get that accreditation because if you lose it, you lose all of your chances to get any federal funds. You cannot get federal funds if you are not accredited by your regional body. And they were about to lose their accreditation. They had been placed on probation and they were up with the, one year was all they had left before to either stay in or get out. Mm -hmm. And uh, my job was to put in place a program and the mechanism necessary to keep their accreditation. And we were fortunate enough to do that in 18 months. You fixed it. I, that's a nice way to put that. Well, yeah. you and others working that, with you. That is correct. Uh, uh, fixed it. Well, that, that's, that's, a, that's a great result. Well, the, the main thing about all of my higher education experiences that I have been able to work with the people I found at the university. Mm -hmm. Now, this might sound strange to a lot of people, but most of the people at these institutions are dedicated to working to make that institution better. Uh, They're proud most, of it. Most of them just want the proper leadership so that they can do what it is they want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that I was fortunate enough to just take the people we had and give them the leadership that they wanted and the trust and confidence uh, that we could do it, and we did it. So at, uh, at Talladega and perhaps other places, you took the existing personnel and did whatever you do to motivate and to direct. You didn't just come in and clean house. That is correct, and, and, and let me just say here that I. I think it's a mistake when a president goes into a place and assumes that nobody there knows what is going <laughs> on. Now, you have to understand, the president usually doesn't understand this, but he is the only one that doesn't know what's going on. Everybody else knows. And all you have to do is try to motivate them to do what they know how to do. Uh, the institution's been around 100 years. Somebody knew something. That's the attitude that I take, and I just take the people and move along with them. Tell us about Benedict College. Now, I would say that Benedict was, uh, at the time that I went there, they had built quite a few buildings at the time. And they were struggling with how to manage that debt. Uh, you know, after a while, you get more debt than you can pay for. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the position that they had, and my role was to come in and start a fundraising campaign so that we could get the money necessary to service those, those debts. And we were able to uh, get a capital fund drive going and we were able to get the state of, and I must say that the state of South Carolina came to our rescue, in, in, not the state in terms of the public, but the general private part of mm. South Carolina. And we were able to raise enough money to do that, and the surprising thing about it, I stayed there 11 years, and uh, in that 11 years, the enrollment increased. That was necessary to help with that debt. Uh, but not only that, but we were able to increase the endowment of the university from about $750,000 to over $10 million in wow. 11 years. Well, that's amazing. And the thing that strikes me is, that of the two, the two places you've described so far, those are very different skill sets necessary to uh, make sure you don't lose accreditation on the one hand and to be a fundraiser and a uh, money manager on the other. Well, you, you're right about that. And, and one of the things that, that you have to learn is that uh, everything that people want at a university is not necessary. <laughs> I mean, it is nice to have, but it is not necessary. And you have to be able to say no to some things. And you have to know which ones to say yes and no to. That is where most presidents get in difficulty, I think, is not knowing. They let personal things get involved in it. And I think one of the things that I have been able to do was separate my personal feelings 
from my professional responsibilities. And if you can do that, you'll do, you'll do very well. Well, you obviously have. Talk about just a little bit more about Fisk University. Now, Fisk was another thing. Uh, that was the place where, before I got there, the students were on the street begging for money. Now, they really had to have money because they had gone to a few bankruptcy lawyers and the lawyers had told them that your only recourse is to file for bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And I went there and that's what I, I met with one of these lawyers and he told me the same thing. Well, I reasoned that first of all, bankruptcy is not something that you can control. Once you get into bankruptcy, you take it out of your control and now you're in the control of the courts. They tell you by this deadline, do this. If you don't do it, this happens. It, and then another deadline and so forth. So after a while, there is no, once you get in it, unless you're successful, you really are in bankruptcy. There's no question about it. So I said, no, we can't do that. And I said to my development officer, I said, now they've told me that I have to file bankruptcy. Now I'm telling you that your responsibility is to get me off this campus more than you have me on this campus because while I'm on this campus, the people are asking me for money. <laughs> when I leave this campus, I can ask other people for money. The only way to get money is to leave the campus. That's something else that most presidents don't understand. You have to leave the campus to get money. You can't stay there. So we took off on a $25 million campaign and everybody said, you can't do it. And I said, we got to try. And we tried, we raised 26 million dollars in that and we were very successful. We were able to pay off everything. Our utility bill had been turned off. We had to pay double utility bills. We had to pay the last, the last one for last year and we had to pay the current one. So that's paying two utility bills at one time. Now keep, you, keep in mind before they couldn't pay one. Yeah. Now I have to pay two plus all the faculty and all of that. But anyway, we solved that and, and, and got it together. Now, one of the interesting things about it is that uh, a faculty member came to me once, just, I mean, just raving, as faculty members do, professionally, <laughs> however, about a requisition. I don't remember the requisition now, nor the amount that he had sent in. And he came to me and said, now, any idiot ought to know that we need this. What is wrong with you? And I let him talk for about 30 minutes. And he really did. He really lambasted me. And when he finished, I said, you know, in this life, the one thing that would be nice to always understand is where your responsibility starts and where it stops. And where the other person's responsibility starts and stops. I said, now your responsibility is to teach and to send in requisition for things that you need. And I honor that. I think that's a great thing to do. My responsibility is to decide if we can afford to buy what you want to do your job. And we don't have the money now. And I promised all of my creditors that I would not buy anything that I could not pay for. So I'm not going to do that, and I think that's my responsibility. Now, your responsibility is to go back to your class and see if you can teach students without having this item that you think you have to have. <laughs> and he got up and smiled. He said, you know, Mr. President, that's the first time anyone explained it to me like that. <laughs> and I think that's part of the problem. We don't really explain to people where we are headed, therefore they can't buy into it. Well, that's leadership, isn't yeah. it? I think it is. That's, that, that's one definition for it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, we're going to have to take a break here, and we're going to let our commercial uh, sponsors do their thing so we can have another segment. Uh, we're very pleased today to have visiting with uh, uh, Dr. Henry Ponder, the interim president of Langston University. Uh, we'll be right back.
The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda cobb Greetham. I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. Every time our country imports energy, we're saying we've lost confidence in our own. But Oklahomans know under the land of the free lies the energy to be brave. Advanced technology has led to vast discoveries of oil and natural gas that have doubled America's supply estimates. Using one well to do the work of 10 and half the time, we're proving that America's best answers will always come from inside our borders. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, advancing our state, empowering our nation. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. And welcome back to The Verdict. We're visiting with Dr. Henry Ponder, the interim president of Langston University. Been hearing about some of his educational background and experiences in other places. Now let's use this segment of the show to talk about Langston itself. Dr. Ponder, how did it feel emotionally, personally to you to be asked back uh, to the place where you started your higher education? Well, Ken, it's, it's, it's easy to say, but, but I use a this this syllogism that would help explain that. You know, if you're a kid out in the yard playing and your brothers or your sisters or some of those call you and say, hey, it's time to come in. You know, you just keep doing what you're doing and say, I'll get in later. But when mother steps out and says, <laughs> Henry, come home. <laughs> you stop whatever you're doing and go home. And that's what happened. Here. This is what happened. This is my alma mater. They said, come home, here I am. It's, it's the greatest feeling I think I've had in my professional career. Really? You know, it's something when the people who know you want you. And it's even more when they say, we need you. Yeah. That's what's important. When people need you and want you, then you're obligated to do what you can. Yeah. And that's where I am. How are you getting settled, in, you and your family? Very well. Listen, everyone has just been so wonderful. They've, they've accepted my family, my wife and I, and uh, they treat us as though we never left, and we'd been gone 50 years or more. Well, I, I have to confess, <laughs> as I did off the air to you, that uh, before the show, I got on the Langston website and saw your address to the Langston students, I think, when you first uh, arrived on scene. And you spend a little bit of time introducing your wife and explaining about how she assists you and you assist her as a team to do what you need to do. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about that? Well, I can tell our viewers that we're coming up on 59 years of marriage. That's that in this day and age, that's a pretty nice thing. That is. And I also will say on this what I said to my students. If I were going to be marooned on an island and they said you have one person, to take with you, it'd be my wife. Yeah. It, it, after 59 years, uh, that's, so this is, this is the, the woman that has birthed two daughters for me who are just outstanding daughters. That couldn't be, no daughters could be better. Yeah. This is a woman that I met as a freshman in college. We at were, Langston. At Langston. We were sweethearts for four years. 
And, and I tell everyone the mistake I made was that I didn't have the preacher on the other side of the stage when we marched across so that when, he, when she came across, I'd have said, Let, I do. <laughs> if I'd have said I do, I'd have been two years, or I'd be 61 years now instead of two. But she has helped me. The main thing, and I think this is important for married couples, someone has to be the breadwinner. I'm not talking about who's best and all of that, but someone has to make some decisions. And my wife always looked at me as, as the breadwinner. And if I came home and said, dear, I just got an offer to go someplace. And she would say, when do we leave? Mm. She never once said to me, and we, we were vagabonds in this business for a while. She never once said to me, well, the kids are in school, they have to come out of school. What am I going to do about my friends? What am I going to do about my house? She just said, when do we leave? Mm. And we went, she made friends there. That's the way it has been. And I would say that when you get that kind of a union in your marriage, you have something that's outstanding and you ought to try to keep it. Well, indeed, you, you uh, have proven your uh, ability to uh, keep it. <laughs> and uh, it obviously is outstanding to you to recognize her in the very uh, kind and gentle way that you did in that talk. Let's talk about Langston. Talk about yeah. enrollment, talk about uh, opportunities, what you see as potential uh, problems that need to be fixed. Tell us about Langston. Well, <clears throat> Langston has an enrollment now of 3,046 students. That's a 6% in, increase in enrollment, and we're very proud of that. But I think the thing that I would like for persons to understand mm -hmm. is that Tulsa, is going to drive Langston University. It, it is not the main campus anymore. We must build Tulsa so that we will have students there. We must have a campus in Tulsa. We must do this because we ought to have 2,000 students in Tulsa in a hurry. Well, there, there, is, a, there is a Langston, Tulsa, is There's it? There's a Langston in Tulsa. That yep. is correct. We have, down in the Greenwood section, we have a place there, a building, and uh, we are accommodating students, but not nearly where we ought to be. Mm -hmm. We have to get programs in, in, in uh, Tulsa. For example, we, we're going to start in Tulsa an urban agricultural program. We're going to, to, to give instructions and teach persons how to grow vegetables in flower pots and in the, in the backyard. Uh, this is what we have to do. People need, urban people have to eat just like the rest of us, and they need to eat good, nutritious food. And if we can teach urban people to grow tomatoes and spinach and turnips, in flower pots, and, and it can be done because my wife has done it mm. all of our lives. My wife has had flower pots growing, so I know that you can grow vegetables in flower pots. Cucumbers, the whole works. We're going to do that. That's a part of the Tulsa thing, and Tulsa is going to drive Langston University. Let me ask you this. We just have about uh, 30 seconds left. What can our viewers do to assist you and to assist the Langston University? What I, would About like, 30 seconds. what I would like for our viewers to do is to support Langston University in words and deeds. Whatever you do, try to be supportive in what you say about Langston. We have something great going on. We just have to have people who are going to help us sell what it is we're doing. Well, Dr. Ponder, we first of all, uh, on behalf of Mick Cornett, who can't be here, we appreciate you coming. We now invite you back for another show when you can do it and when we have time. We didn't even get to do more than just scratch the surface, surface about Langston. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we've been visiting uh, with Dr. Henry Ponder, interim president of Langston University. We'll be right back. comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. 
legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent Myers, uh, closing up this segment. Uh, we are so pleased to have had Dr. Henry Ponder, the interim president of Langston University, join us and let us know what's going on at that fine institution. i uh, got a couple of websites I want to give to you. If you want to check out more about Langston University, go to www.langston.edu. And if you want to talk to us about shows you'd like to see, go to our website, www.theverdict.tv. For Mick Cornett, I'm Kent Myers. Come back and see us next week and see us on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.